Hi everybody, I'm Just Some Guy, and today I'm going to be talking about the Marvel Generations books. So, I'm not going to do a proper review, because that's already been done by a bunch of people at this point. What I want to talk about is what these books ended up doing, and um, how badly this is going to go for Marvel. So, I had a feeling, when they first announced this, that this really wasn't going to end up being anything other than them trying to... Uh, sell the the new characters that they were just going to be desperate to make everybody like these new characters and it turns out that yeah they tried to do that i'm going to have a little bit of a different opinion about the last book that came out so so far there have been four of them one with the hulks one with gene gray one with uh, wolverine and then one with uh, thor and the last one was the one with thor uh, the writer jason aaron he really didn't make feminist thor look that great she doesn't really win the day the same way that in the other three books, the replacement character was the one who saves the day. She really didn't. We got a lot of backstory on the real Thor and why he is the way that he is. And this is the point that I think is so crucial here is that despite everything that Marvel was attempting to do with this, this series, they have inadvertently proved that the original characters are better. And I'm just going to explain how by just giving a, a general rundown of what happened in all four of these books. In all four of these books, despite everything that the writers were doing, despite everything that Marvel basically probably mandated, what they did was tell stories that showed exactly why the original characters are iconic and why the replacement characters are pointless. In the, the Hulk story, we see Amadeus Cho basically, you know, leading the day, but he has no real reason to do any of the things that he's doing. Meanwhile, Bruce Banner is on the run trying to make sure that General Ross doesn't get control over him and use that power of the Hulk in order to turn it into a, a weapon of mass destruction. In the, uh, in the Jean Grey book, what we get is an example of young Jean Grey being afraid that she's going to turn into the Phoenix while we're watching older Jean Grey thinking that the other X-Men are dead, not dealing with it, but slowly being consumed by the power of the Phoenix. The same thing with the Wolverine book. Laura shows up. And she basically just says, like, you know, you're, you're a shitty dad. Well, Wolverine already knows that he's a shitty dad. He doesn't need your help to tell him that. But what we really get to see is that Wolverine is struggling to deal with the fact that he wants to have relationships with people, but anyone who gets close to him gets put into danger, and so he can't. And then we see in this Thor book the same thing, that we're watching a young Thor trying to prove himself worthy of lifting Mjolnir. And here comes feminist Thor who just has the hammer because, hey, she has cancer and she doesn't want to die. And that's apparently why she's worthy. And there's this moment where feminist Thor realizes that the, the Vikings are inspired by Thor, but that Thor is also inspired by the Vikings and that they are basically feeding on each other and supporting each other. And that's what makes him such a, a powerful and, and important, reverent character. Meanwhile, she wants to use the power of Thor so that she doesn't die from cancer. And that's basically it. He's motivated by doing the right thing. That's what makes him Thor. That's what makes him worthy. And we're seeing that with all these characters, that every last one of the replacement characters, the new characters, the, the diverse characters, have absolutely no point to being heroes. There's no call to adventure. There's no sacrifice that they must make in order to be a hero. Every last one of them gets everything that they want. And then they get to be a hero, too. There's nothing relatable about them when you tell stories that way. It's no different than telling stories about a rich kid who's super smart, who's super attractive, who's very popular. There's nothing relatable in that character. The characters who are relatable are the ones who have to struggle because most people have to struggle. They have to try to get what they want. They don't just have it handed to them. That's the difference between the original characters versus the legacy characters is that every last one of the original characters has to try to earn their place, whereas the replacement characters are just given those titles. And so they're boring. Maybe this is an underlying element of the subconscious of Marvel, the leftovers of, of what Stan Lee built, what Jack Kirby built. Uh, maybe some of those creators who, who have gone full on SJW still have those elements of saying, oh yeah, I, I remember when heroes were cool and wanting to sort of tell those types of stories again. But Marvel Generations is just not doing what they expected it to do. It's not selling any new characters. It's proving why the original characters are better, why they're superior, why those characters are iconic, and why the replacements are just completely trash. So Marvel can keep publishing these. I don't know how many more they're going to do. I think it's like a 12-issue thing. So we're four down. That means we got another, what, eight to go? Go ahead, Marvel. 
put them out there because I don't think that these books are selling that well. I don't think they're going over very well with most people. I haven't seen a lot of great reviews about them. I'll give credit to the last book. I think it was the best written out of all of them and had the best art out of all of them. But overall, just not doing the job that Marvel expected. My suggestion with Marvel is that if they're really having this problem of connecting with a younger audience, then you should do what DC Comics did 30 years ago because you're about at the same age that they were in 86 when they decided to do Crisis on Infinite Earths and just reboot your whole fucking continuity. Then you can have your young version of your characters. And if you want to do some swaps, then then you can do that. You want to make Peter Parker black, then you could do that if you so desire. It would still piss everyone off, but it would be better than trying to replace him with Miles Morales, like everyone's going to magically forget Peter Parker. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.